In this video, we will take a look at the top 10 largest mega projects in South America. We will discuss the purpose of each project, its estimated cost, and its potential impact on the region. We will also provide updates on the status of each project, and we will discuss the challenges that they face. These projects are all at different stages of development, but they all have the potential to make a significant impact on South America. We will continue to monitor these projects and provide updates on their progress. In addition to the mega projects that we have mentioned, there are many other large-scale projects that are underway in South America. These projects include the construction of new roads, bridges, and airports, as well as the development of new energy and water infrastructure. These projects are essential for the region's economic growth and they will help to improve the lives of millions of people. The Bioceanic Railway Integration Corridor is a proposed railway line that would connect Brazil, Bolivia, Peru, and Paraguay. The line would be 3,750 kilometers long and would cost an estimated $10 billion to build. The railway is expected to boost trade and economic growth in the region. The railway would connect the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, providing a new route for goods to be transported between Asia and Europe. This would reduce the need for goods to be shipped around the Cape of Good Hope, which would save time and money. The railway would also create jobs and boost economic growth in the four countries involved. The project is still in the early stages of development, but it has the potential to be a major game-changer for South America. The railway would help to integrate the region and make it more competitive in the global economy. It would also help to reduce poverty and improve the lives of millions of people. The construction of the Bioceanic Railway Integration Corridor is a major undertaking but it is one that is worth pursuing. The railway has the potential to transform South America and make it a more prosperous and connected region. The Galapagos Islands Rewilding Project is a conservation effort to restore the natural ecosystems of the Galapagos Islands. The project is led by a coalition of nonprofits, including Rewild, Island Conservation, and the Galapagos National Park Directorate. The project aims to reintroduce locally extinct species, establish a captive breeding program for endangered species, and strengthen measures to protect marine resources. The Galapagos Islands are a UNESCO World Heritage Site and are home to a unique and diverse array of wildlife. However, the islands have been impacted by human activities, such as invasive species, overfishing, and climate change. The Galapagos Islands Rewilding Project is working to address these threats and restore the islands to their former glory. The project has already made some progress. In 2022, the project reintroduced 15 giant tortoises to Florina Island, where they had been locally extinct for over 100 years. The project is also working to eradicate invasive species, such as rats and goats, which have decimated native wildlife populations. The Galapagos Islands Rewilding Project is a long-term effort, but it has the potential to make a significant difference for the islands. The project is working to restore the Galapagos Islands to their former glory and to create a sustainable future for the islands and their wildlife. Here are some of the benefits of the Galapagos Islands Rewilding Project. It will help to restore the natural ecosystems of the Galapagos Islands. It will help to protect endangered species. It will help to boost tourism in the region. It will help to educate people about the importance of conservation. The Galapagos Islands Rewilding Project is a vital initiative that is helping to protect one of the most unique and important ecosystems in the world. The Atepu Dam is a hydroelectric dam on the Parana River that straddles the border between Brazil and Paraguay. The dam is the world's largest hydroelectric power plant in terms of installed capacity. Itapu generates an estimated 14,000 megawatts of electricity, which is enough to power more than 40 million homes. The Itapu Dam was built between 1975 and 1982. It is a joint venture between Brazil and Paraguay, and is operated by Itapu Binational, a binational company owned by the two countries. The dam has been a major source of electricity for both countries and has helped to boost their economies. The Atepu Dam has also had a significant impact on the environment. The dam has created a large reservoir, which has flooded a large area of land. The dam has also changed the flow of the Parana River, which has had an impact on the river's ecosystem. Despite the environmental impact, the Atepu Dam is considered to be a major success. It has provided a reliable source of electricity for two countries and has helped to boost their economies. The dam is also a major tourist attraction and is visited by millions of people each year.
The Orinoco gas pipeline is a proposed natural gas pipeline that would transport gas from Venezuela to Brazil. The pipeline would be 2,700 kilometers long, and would cost an estimated $15 billion to build. The pipeline is expected to boost energy security and economic growth in the region. The Orinoco gas pipeline would transport gas from the Orinoco Belt which is a region of Venezuela that contains large reserves of heavy crude oil and natural gas. The pipeline would connect the Orinoco Belt to the Brazilian state of Urema. From there, the gas could be transported to other parts of Brazil or exported to other countries. The Orinoco gas pipeline has been in the planning stages for many years. However, the project has been delayed due to a number of factors, including the political instability in Venezuela. In recent years, there has been renewed interest in the project, and it is possible that it could be built in the near future. The Orinoco gas pipeline has the potential to be a major economic development project for Venezuela and Brazil. The pipeline would create jobs and boost economic growth in both countries. It would also help to diversify Venezuela's economy which is currently heavily dependent on oil exports. However, the Orinoco gas pipeline also has the potential to have a negative impact on the environment. The pipeline would cross through a number of sensitive ecosystems, and there is a risk of leaks and spills. The pipeline could also contribute to climate change, as burning natural gas releases greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Overall, the Orinoco gas pipeline is a complex project with both potential benefits and risks. It is important to carefully consider all of the factors and involved before making a decision about whether or not to build the pipeline. The Panama Canal expansion is a project that widened and deepened the Panama Canal. The expansion was completed in 2016 and doubled the canal's capacity, allowing larger ships to pass through. The Panama Canal expansion was a major undertaking that cost an estimated $5.25 billion. The project was completed ahead of schedule and under budget. The Panama Canal expansion has had a significant impact on global trade. The expansion has allowed larger ships to pass through the canal, which has reduced shipping costs and increased trade between Asia and the Americas. The Panama Canal expansion is a major success story. The project was completed ahead of schedule and under budget, and it has had a significant impact on global trade. The expansion is a testament to the ingenuity and hard work of the Panamanian people. Here are some of the benefits of the Panama Canal expansion. It has doubled the canal's capacity, allowing larger ships to pass through. It has reduced shipping costs and increased trade between Asia and the Americas. It has created jobs and boosted the economy of Panama. It has made the canal more efficient and environmentally friendly. The Panama Canal expansion is a major achievement that has had a positive impact on the world. It is a testament to the ingenuity and hard work of the Panamanian people. The Sao Paulo Metro Line 6 is a new metro line currently under construction in Sao Paulo, Brazil. The line will be 15.9 kilometers long and will have 15 stations. It is expected to be completed in 2025. The line will connect the Sao Joaquim station on Line 4 with the Brasilandia district in the north of the city. It will pass through several major neighborhoods, including Bella Vista, Hygienopolis, Pakembu, Sumer, Perdizes, Pompeia, Frigisia Duo, and Brasilandia. The line is expected to serve an estimated 633,000 passengers per day. It is expected to reduce traffic congestion and improve public transportation in the city. The construction of the line is being financed by a consortium of Brazilian and Chinese companies. The total cost of the project is estimated at R$ 15 billion. The Sao Paulo Metro Line 6 is a major infrastructure project that is expected to have a significant impact on the city. The line is expected to improve mobility, reduce traffic congestion, and improve the quality of life for residents of Sao Paulo. Here are some of the benefits of the Sao Paulo Metro Line 6. It will improve mobility in the city by providing a new and efficient way to travel. It will reduce traffic congestion by taking cars off the road. It will improve the quality of life for residents of Sao Paulo by making it easier to get around the city. It will create jobs during construction and operation. The Sao Paulo Metro Line 6 is a major investment in the future of the city. It is expected to have a positive impact on the economy, environment, and quality of life for residents of Sao Paulo. The Santiago Valparaiso high-speed rail is a proposed high-speed rail line that would connect the Chilean capital city of Santiago with the port city of Valparaiso. The line would be 187 kilometers long and would take about 45 minutes to travel.
compared to the current travel time of about 2 hours and 30 minutes. The Santiago Valparaiso High Speed Rail is a project that has been in the works for many years. In 2018, a proposal was submitted by the Tren Valparaiso Santiago Consortium of local firm Sigdocoppers and China Railway Engineering Corporation. The US $2.5 billion plan consisted of a 127 kilometers, 7090 line with four stations to be designed for passenger trains run at up to 220 kilometers per hour 140 miles per hour offering an end-to-end -end journey time of 45 min around half the time currently taken by road the line would also be suitable for freight trains operating at up to 85 kilometers per hour 53 miles per hour the chilean government has expressed interest in the project but has not yet made a decision on whether to proceed. The project is facing a number of challenges, including the high cost of construction and the need to acquire land for the right-of-way. The Santiago Valparaiso high-speed rail has the potential to be a major economic development project for Chile. The project would create jobs during construction and operation and would boost tourism between the two cities. The project would also help to reduce traffic congestion on the road between Santiago and Valparaiso. The Santiago Valparaiso so high-speed rail is a complex project with both potential benefits and risks. It is important to carefully consider all of the factors involved before making a decision about whether or not to build the line. The Tuxpan Refinery is an oil refinery located in the city of Tuxpan, Veracruz, Mexico. It is owned and operated by Petróleos Mexicanos, Pemex, the state-owned oil company of Mexico. The refinery has a crude oil processing capacity of 330,000 barrels per day BPD. The Tuxpan Refinery was built in the 1970s and has been upgraded several times since then. The refinery is currently undergoing a major modernization project, which is expected to be completed in 2020. The modernization project will increase the refinery's crude oil processing capacity to 370,000 BPD and will also improve the refinery's environmental performance. The Tuxpan refinery is an important part of Mexico's oil industry. The refinery produces a variety of petroleum products, including gasoline, diesel fuel, and jet fuel. The refinery also produces asphalt and other petrochemicals. The Tuxpan refinery is a major source of jobs for the people of Veracruz. The Tuxpan refinery is a strategic asset for Mexico. The refinery helps to ensure Mexico's energy security, and it also also contributes to the country's economic development. The modernization of the Tuxpan refinery will make it a more efficient and environmentally friendly facility. This will help Mexico to meet its growing energy needs in a sustainable way. The Venezuelan Petrochemical Complex VCC, is a complex of petrochemical plants located in the city of Ose and Zodigi, Venezuela. The complex is owned and operated by Pequivin, the state-owned petrochemical company of Venezuela. The VCC has a production capacity of over 2 million tons per year of petrochemicals, including ethylene propylene, butadiene, and vinyl chloride monomer. The VCC was built in the 1970s and 1980s, with the help of foreign investment. The complex was designed to produce basic petrochemicals that could be used to manufacture a variety of products, including plastics, fertilizers, and pharmaceuticals. The VCC was a major success in its early years, and it helped to make Venezuela a major producer of petrochemicals. However, the VCC has been struggling in recent years due to a number of factors, including the decline of the Venezuelan economy, the US sanctions on Venezuela, and the COVID-19 pandemic. The VCC has been operating at a fraction of its capacity, and it has been unable to meet the demand for petrochemicals in Venezuela. The Venezuelan government has announced plans to invest in the VCC in order to rehabilitate the complex and increase its production capacity. The government hopes that the VCC will be able to help to revive the Venezuelan economy and create jobs. The Venezuelan petrochemical complex is a strategic asset for Venezuela. The complex has the potential to generate jobs and boost the economy. However, the complex is facing a number of challenges including the decline of the Venezuelan economy, the U.S. sanctions on Venezuela, and the COVID-19 pandemic. The future of the VCC is uncertain, but the Venezuelan government is hoping that the complex will be able to play a role in the country's economic recovery.